Hi guys, welcome to Talking Money with Nuzi, personal finance made simple. Today I'm going to be talking about interest. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I don't know how many times I've seen people complaining on social media. Someone will say, I saved X amount of money with a certain bank and I was very disappointed with the interest that I received at the end. And I'm like, Njani guys, how? Because all banks tell you how much interest in terms of percentage they will pay you for your savings. And you should use that interest rate to calculate exactly how much you're going to get. It shouldn't come as a surprise to you. So it's either people are just saving their money blindly without checking the interest rate and hoping for the best, or they actually don't know how interest works and how to calculate exactly what they'll get. So today I'm going to address that. What is interest? Interest is money that a financial institution like a bank gives you for saving your money there. Now, there are two types of interest. Number one, there is simple interest. Number two, there is compound interest. What's the difference between between simple interest and compound interest. Well, the difference between simple interest and compound interest is the way that the interest is earned. Simple interest only accumulates on the amount that you deposited in the beginning. This amount of money is called the principal. An example of simple interest is if you save 10,000 Rand in a savings account that pays 10% annually and you choose not to reinvest the interest but to receive the interest in terms of cash payments. To find out how much you will earn as cash, you simply multiply the principal by the interest rate and that's it. All right guys, this is the simple interest calculator that I'm going to use today to show you how simple interest works. So right here where it says principal, it's 10,000. Please ignore the dollar sign because calculations work regardless. Where it says interest rate, I'm going to change it to 10%. And this is an annual interest rate, guys. This is not monthly. To get a monthly interest rate, you divide by 12. Then for the term, let's just pretend that you are going to be saving your money for a year. Then calculate that. Then the calculation has run, and this is what it's showing you. From a principle of 10,000, if you earn 10% interest, 10% 10 of 10,000 is 1,000. So this is the amount of money that you are going to receive as cash simple right but compound interest is a little different from simple interest compound interest is interest that is paid on both the principal and also on the interest that you already earned and it works by you not withdrawing your interest okay guys this is the spreadsheet where i'm going to show you how compound interest works so the annual interest rate is 10 percent in order for you to calculate the monthly interest that you're going to earn, you divide 10% by 12. So 10 divided by 12 gives you 0.83%. So this is the monthly interest that you're going to earn. So in column one, there's the principal, the interest earned, as well as the new amount. The principal is the amount of money that you deposit. So in month one, you deposit 10,000 rand. And then to calculate how much interest you earn, you take the principal and you multiply by the monthly rate. So 10,000 rand times 0.83% gives you 83 rand. The new amount after you've earned your interest is 10,000 and 83 rand. Now in month two, you are not going to start with the principal of 10,000 rand. Instead, you're going to start with the principal of 10,000 and 83 rand. Multiply that by 0.83% to get the interest earned, which is 83 rand and 69 cents. Add these two together and the new amount at the end of month number two is 10,000 rand, 166 and 69 cents. Month three, same story. You're no longer going to start with a principal of 10,083. You are now starting with the principal of 10,000 rand, 166 rand and 69 cents. So if you take 10,000 rand, 166 rand and 69 cents, multiplied by the monthly interest, you are going to get 84 rand and 38 cents. That's the interest earned. Then the new amount is the total of these two numbers, which is 10,000. 251 rand and seven cents in month four and i'm sure now you get the gist your principal is 10,251 rand and seven cents that will earn more interest your balance will become 10,336 rand and 15 cents so let me fill up the rest of the columns to see what we end up with at the end of month 12.
So at the end of month 12, the balance is 11,042 Rand and 73 cents. Guys, if compound interest can do this to 10,000 Rand in a space of 12 months, imagine what compound interest can do in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years. This is my favorite compound interest calculator. And I'm going to show you what compound interest can do with that 10,000 Rand in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, and in 20 years. And let's say you earn 10% yearly, not monthly, yearly. Let's start with five years. Compound interval is yearly, right? And we don't deposit anything further. How much will that get us? So let's calculate that. Our initial balance was 10,000 Rand. The total interest earned over those five years is 6,105. Adding the two would be 16,105 and 10 cents. Not bad. Let's look at what would happen if we increase the number of years. So let's pretend you keep your 10,000. Now you're not keeping it for five years, you're keeping it for 10 years and it still continues earning that interest, right? Let's see what will happen. So after 10 years, the total interest earned would be 15,937 Rand and 42 cents. Now, can you see that your total interest earned is actually more than your deposit? So in total, if you add your deposit plus the interest earned, that is 25,937 Rand and 42 cents. Let's look at what would happen in 15 years. Let's calculate that and see how much you'll get after 15 years. Your deposit was just 10,000 Rand. But after 15 years, that money has earned triple of what you deposited. So the total interest earned over 15 years is 31,772 Rand and 48 cents for a total of 41,772 and 48 cents. Let's look at 20 years. Calculate that. Look at this mind blowing. The total interest earned is 57,000. 275 rand. So this is more than five times of what you deposited. If you add your initial balance plus your interest would be 67,000 rand, 275. So if compound interest can do this to 10,000 rand, just imagine what it can do to 20,000 rand or 50,000 rand or 100,000 rand. Let me just put 100,000 so that you see for yourselves. And that money compounds at 10% annually for 20 years. How much will that money be worth at the end of 20 years? Let's calculate that. It will be worth 672,749 Rand and 99 cents. And the total interest earned is 572,749 and 99 cents. And that's why I say to people, compound interest doesn't make sense in a few months. In a few months, ah, it's little. Give it years and you'll see wonders. Guys, I repeat this. Compound interest works only if you reinvest the interest. It doesn't work if you take money out. The moment you take money out, compounding stops. That's why I always say if you are investing for the long term, don't withdraw your money. Leave it alone so that compound interest does its magic to grow your money. The only thing that you can do is to add more money, but don't take it out. Another thing that you should realize about interest is that Interest is good when you earn it, but interest can be bad and work against you if you borrow money and have to pay it. Now I'm going to show you how compound interest can work against you if you are owing. This is if you are in debt. And some debts, by the way, accumulate via compounding interest. This is so scary. I'm going to use an example of a credit card, which is charging you an annual interest of 18% which translates to a daily interest rate of 0.05. How did I get this number? First, you divide 18% by 12 to get the monthly rate. And then to get the daily rate, you divide by 30 because there are 30 days in a month, more or less. So let's assume that you are owing a negative balance on your credit card of 50,000 Rand. So on day one, how much will accumulate on top of that? So you take 50,000 Rand and you multiply by the daily interest rate. I'm running the calculation. That will give you 25 Rand. So 50,000 Rand plus 25 Rand will give you your new balance, which is 50,000 and 25. That's what you're owing at the end of day one. In day two, the opening balance is no longer 50,000. It is now 50,000 and 25, right? And then you're going to accumulate interest on that new balance. And this is what you'll get. So at the end of day two, you're going to be owing 50,000 Rand and 50. Day three, same thing. Your opening balance is now 50,050, and then they're going to add. 
the daily interest on top of that. This is what happens. So on day three, you are now owing 50,000 and 75. So let me fill up the rest of the days up to day 15 so that you can see what you're going to be owing at the end of 15 days. At the end of 15 days, one five, you're going to be owing 50,376 rand and 32 cents. And these are just 15 days. So how much are you going to be owing at the end of the month after the 30 days? How much are you going to be owing in two months, in six months, in one year? So guys, you don't want to be in a position where compound interest is working against you. You always should be in a position where you are earning compound interest and not paying compound interest. Paying compound interest is how you become poor. Earning compound interest is how you become rich. Albert Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't understand it, pay it. Too many people are on the wrong side of the statement. If you want your finances to improve, if you want to build your wealth, if you want to become financially free, you should aim to earn compound interest and avoid paying compound interest. So where can you earn this compound interest? Well, you can earn compound interest from anywhere, from your savings account, your fixed deposit accounts, your unit trusts, your government bonds, your shares, your ETFs, your pensions, etc. Basically, you can earn compound interest from most of your saving and investing accounts, but the trick is to reinvest. So if you get any interest, you don't take it out, you reinvest it. If you get any dividends, you don't take them out, you reinvest them. That's how you get compound interest. It's not a matter of where, but how. And the how part is the reinvesting. Once you take out money, that process is disturbed and you won't get compound interest. If you want to learn more about saving and investing, you can buy copies of my eBooks about personal finance and investing from my online store. Just go to the description below and click on the link to my online store. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Please leave your comments and questions in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.